if you're upset with the world and go help somebody else. All right. Hey, there. this is Dr. Robert Cyprian with Heal Profoundly Conversations of Transformation. And um, here with Vita, and she's got a beautiful background going on here. And um, wow, I wish I was out there. It looks great out there right now. Vita, how are you doing? And um, yeah, one of our friends, someone that I met, uh, was it two years ago or something like that? No, it was last year. Last year? Last that, um, year. Yeah, that we bumped into. And uh, yeah, you brought him on today to kind of chat with us. So Rudy, who do you got? Um, <laughs> Vita, introduce Rudy to us. So actually, Rudy is an amazing man who I really, really admire. And the person who has the purest and the biggest heart. And uh, I don't know, just like a, like a legacy man, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so yesterday, accidentally i met him in the lobby of the hotel in miami and it was just it was just very serendipitous serendipitous meeting <laughs> and um he agreed to give us an interview because he has really really interesting life um uh, so i'm very happy so thank you for doing us for doing it um and what's interesting is so we started to prepare for interview and he brought this book prayers and I just don't open it, so I just want to read one thing. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> it yeah. says, yeah, so I open it on truth. And it says, every human is an artist. And our greatest art is life. Humans perceive life and try to make sense of life by expressing what we perceive as words, music, and other expressions of art. We perceive life and then create a story to justify, describe, and explain our perception and emotional reaction. All humans are storytellers, and that's what makes us artists. And as I know Rudy, he is a truly artist, and he always creates and trying to build something. Like he, he comes to Miami, and he's like, I already like want to build this. I want to build this. <laughs> he's the person I always hear, build, build, create built like health so he's that kind of person oh uh, so great yeah artists are the creators so rudy what are you doing in miami what's going on so i'm here to have some fun and enjoy the sunshine i uh, live in washington dc and uh it was quite cold and gloomy up there so i thought hey it's time for a little change so here i am but i think you should mention about your <laughs> About? about the twos oh, because that's so, science it tastes yeah. a lot and i believe in science so. so i was in miami for a little while having a really good time and but eventually i thought hey time to go back home right so i go back to washington a couple of days later my tooth started bothering me so i go to the dentist he sends me there's nothing there so he sends me a specialist they do x-rays they can't find anything that's so i started feeling not so well so i go to my doctor's full blood work so he comes back to me with a you know, you guys, everything looks great. There's nothing wrong with you. So I decided to pack it up and come back to Miami. As soon as I land in Miami, the toothache is gone. All that other, all these other symptoms I was feeling disappeared. I trimmed back, you know, so now I have my abs again. And so I don't know, it was like a magical um, transformation. And I think um, the sunshine, maybe the vitamin D, uh, the people here, uh, the ocean breeze kind of healed me in a way. Uh, it, it, it can do that. Yeah, just, you know, you got to be where you're meant to be when you're in the place where you're meant to be. Everything gets easier, I feel like, with your health, with your life, just your spirituality. I think everything just starts working better if you're in your right place. Yeah. And, I, you know, I see signs all over everywhere. And the signs were popping up everywhere. This is a home. This is where we need to be. Like, and, and the we, and in a, in, in a plural. Like, we need to be here as if my soul and... Uh, and, you know, and I were both kind of, you know, uh, conversing with each other. And so all the signs kept popping up, even in like advertising, like, this is your homestead. This is your home. This is where you need to be. So here I am. Oh, I hear and, you. Yeah. And what's interesting. So last time I saw Rudy, it was like one year ago. Uh, it was December. I remember it very well because it was full moon. It was December 12, 12, you know, 
the full moon was like at 12 12 <laughs> and i was looking at it we were looking at the full moon i remember and then so yesterday it was a full moon too and we met it was like it was like one month like one year one month later but it's just like we kind of came to like circle complete you know and we leveled up <laughs> Yeah. So the last time I saw Vera, actually, the memory I have of her was uh, we were riding our bikes back from a Bikram yoga class that she took you know, to at like five in the morning or something. Six a.m. <laughs> so I remember how healing that class was and how transformative it was. And I remember riding the bikes. We each had our bikes. And so she dropped me off at my place. And I remember that moment. And it just sort of engraved my mind because she had really lifted me up from a place where, you know, I, I, I didn't want to be. And uh, so, uh, and then yesterday I had said no to many potential uh, dates and other things. And I was hanging out in my lobby and I have this, uh, and I have this uh, love jacket that I wear, sort of my famous. Um, I, I remember jacket. it. I remember oh, it. Yeah. Oh, he does? <laughs> I know. Okay. Because you came to the dinner in this jacket. Are you serious? Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh, what a small world. Yeah, so she cat, recognized me from the cafe. jacket. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I recognized you because of this jacket. You know, yeah. I was just like, really? What? <laughs> interesting. What a coincidence. This is not coincidence. Yeah. Well, a coincidence is a miracle in which God chooses to remain anonymous, right? That's exactly it. Yeah. So Rudy, I, I remember talking to you a bit. I remember kind of um, some of the things that you've uh, gone through in your life. And what this really, what we want to do here is we want to really talk about transformation, how people transform in life, the things they look for, the actions they take. For you, when I ask you about transformation in your life, what do you think are some of the biggest things that you've come across in your life that help you transform into who you are now? Well, I, I believe that pain, I, I, you know, I don't want to say suffering, suffering is not okay, but pain is all right. And I think pain is really what transforms you. Yeah. Um, and I've endured some tremendous amount of pain um, in my lifetime. And I believe that that sort of, you know, made me the way I am today, uh, really transform me into a sort of a fearless, um, tough, um, but if you squeeze me, nothing but love and joy comes out. So it's sort of a, like a softness and uh, and strength all combined together. But I, I believe that the source of all that is really the pain. Oh, the pain. Yeah, that's what wakes you up and makes you look at things in life and look at where you're at. Right. And then from there, you make your next decision. I mean, that's what I feel it's about. Yeah, we actually talked about this last time. Right. So we said that like when you get like the disease or whatever it is at the stop point to see that something is going wrong direction or whatever to start looking deeper into yourself. Yeah. So I, I was in a um, distributing food uh, overseas uh, a few months ago uh, to literally thousands of people that were you know, struggling. And the nun who was helping me with the distribution stood on a chair and addressed the hundreds of people that were waiting to, to receive their she told them, uh, the father is here. They all want to know who's bringing all this stuff. And then she said to them, to the people, uh, and this father uh, chose to express his grief with by giving. And that's why he is here today. Had he not done that, he, his life would have ended at the moment that he lost his child. But my choosing to express that um, by giving gave me a new life. And that was the first time I heard that from, you know, from her. And now I realize that this is really what's helping me move forward. Um, is this, um, and this is something I learned from my son's video that he left behind is if you're upset with the world then go help somebody else, because that would take you out of your own self delusion, take you to a place of peace and love. So go help someone else. And that's really what's been giving me, um, a purpose right now otherwise it'd be very difficult to navigate life with all this um, all these things that happen wow yeah I, I really don't believe that you know any of us can be in our right place unless we're coming from service somehow for somebody whether it's just for your children or for society or even just for a pet i really feel that to be happy and truly in a good place in life you have to be in service in some way 
And it's so important, really. And sometimes people are just about focus on receiving and where they at and, you know, they're a victim. But if you could turn around and put that energy towards service, um, it, it just, it, I really feel it opens you up for your possibilities in life. Exactly. Exactly. And so I find myself sometimes <clears throat> like giving a lot of love to my dog. Like I'll be in room, I'll be like, you know how much I love you? Like I'll talk to her like a human. And honestly, it feels good because now I'm, ex I'm able to express my love if there's no human around me. I mean, I'm giving to, to, to my puppy and that's feeling good. Uh, just giving the love. And um, so I agree with you. Um, I think um, that's certainly the, the giving, the, this new giving culture um, and gifting culture that I picked up at Burning Man as well. Uh, the idea that there's no expectations um, and the most powerful giving in the anon is anonymous giving, right? And anonymous giving in particular to people who can never ever pay you back. Yeah. This is the most powerful one. And I get to do a lot of that. I have a child that I adopted in Ethiopia along with many other children. His name is Getai Alkal. In Ethiopian, it means God knows. So the kid's name is God knows. And God only knows like how many people's lives were really touching the last few years. And it's all came from that pain again. And it's helping me pass it. Wow. So that's, you that's said you part. adopted it? I adopted. I mean, I, I not legal adoption in terms of like doing paperwork, but I have I run my orf my own orphanages in Ethiopia, so I have a boys' home and a girls' home. And uh, over the years, some of the kids have grown up, gone off to university, so I've got new kids in the in their you know in their rooms. And now the university kids who graduated are looking for just like regular kids. They're looking for work and the economy and this and that. So it's, it's a never-ending uh, connection. But they all call me dad. And they write me these incredible letters, and you have no idea the stuff that I hear from them. And that sometimes when I'm down or I'm feeling a little sad, and I receive a message from them, it just you know it makes it, it makes all the difference, and really changes again, transforms my mood immediately, uh, knowing that someone out there needs me, yeah. or uh, it's that's really uh, I think very important for humans that we feel needed uh, more so than needing anything. Yeah. Were you always like this way? Like giving, you know, loving, or you had like some uh, a point in your life where you like, you know, changed yeah. and transformed? I mean, I, I always had a, I would say I had a gifting nature. Um, and that's how my businesses actually, um, you know, went through the roof. It was through the yeah, philanthropy. Yeah, I started by giving first, and then the universe conspired to reward me for that in a, in a magnificent way. And so I, I, I truly believe that uh, gifting and giving is key to success. And the universe likes a good conduit. So if you're the type who hoards or is cheap or doesn't share, the universe stops sending you goodies because you're not a good conduit. But if you really um, distribute properly and take care of those in need, then the universe sends you more. Uh, and the more they send you, the more giving you do. And the more giving you, the more they send you. And then so you end up riding this sort of virtuous cycle. And now I'm, I'm, on, that, I'm on that wave. I'm on that virtuous wave. And it just, it's not ending. You know, it just keeps rising and rising. Um, but I say I took it to a completely other level when my son got sick. Um, my faith got much deeper. Um, I took some folks lose their faith when they go through difficult circumstances. For me, it was the exact opposite. Um, it took me to another, I mean, to, to a place of deep faith that um, everything has a reason. Even that pain had its own purpose. Um, I think finding the silver lining um, is key to resiliency. Um, if you don't if you can't find the purpose in everything, either the bad and the good, it's very hard to move forward. Uh, but when you do find the silver lining, even in a very, very difficult situation, then you're a survivor. There's just no, there's no, you're unbeatable um, because you never give up. And you can't beat a person who never gives up. You just can't do it, right? Oh, yeah. Words, it... words of wisdom. 
It, it is. It is. It's, it's very inspiring to me too, just to hear you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, wow, I got to really focus a bit more on my life, even though I feel like I've done a lot, but I just hear you and I feel your energy where you're at. And I'm like, I want to climb up there. That's great. That's a lot of people, you know, come up to me. Uh, a lot of times I've been I was sharing with Vida yesterday how like, my like, vibration is uh, the, the kinds of people I'm attracting. I mean, just people just come up to me and just want to sit next to me like, hey, just your energy, you know, and I'm getting a lot of that. And um, I tell it, and then some people will tell me, hey, how do we get to this level? And I say, no, 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 no. You don't want to get, you're exactly where you need to be now. You I went through to get to where I am. It's just that um, sometimes though I tell God, you know, just to stop trusting me so much that you can, you know, I, I, I have extreme faith and I, and I hope that you give me a little break, uh, just have a nice ride next few years without any, you know, any more lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break, vacation. Give me a break. <laughs> Please don't trust me so much anymore. No, I'm only kidding. Um, and also, you're wearing a hat with the Rudy Project. So tell, tell us more. So, yeah, so <laughs> the, the Rudy Project is about living life to the fullest. And um, I planned in the next few years to roam the globe um, and, uh, you know, finding some of the coolest spots and sharing that joy with others. And while in those communities, uh, do a major philanthropic endeavor. So any, any area that I would go to, we do a little tourism, good food and whatnot. But while we're there, we drop a library or we build them a school or we open an orphanage or we just kind of uplift the community. Um, and the idea is not to do individual, I, I rarely do, I, I do once in a while help on an individual level, but now I'm, I'm navigating the community level. And the idea is to uplift a village or, or a group of people together. Uh -huh. And so the idea is to do that at, at these different locations and make it fun so people would want to watch and eat some good food yeah. and party because, yeah. So that's the idea of the Rudy Project. Hopefully we'll, the, the first episode will uh, you know, be uh, ready in a few weeks. <laughs> that's that's amazing that's great and yeah I, I and i imagined like some of these areas some of these villages it doesn't take that much to help them because of the areas they're in everything's cheaper the the labor is cheaper the materials are cheaper than trying to do it like somewhere here so yeah i feel like people could do so much good around the world that way just going to these little areas where they could just add a little bit and things just grow yeah i built a digital library in, in east africa for for a village, it cost me less than what it cost to restore a desk in a historic library I built in Washington, D.C. This is the truth. Wow. Uh, the whole library, an entire library, cost less than the cost to refurbish a historic desk at a, you know, in a very historic building. So you're absolutely right. Now, some countries, you know, the last library, digital library I gifted was for the city of San Salvador. We just uh, had the ribbon cutting two weeks ago. That was a little bit different because their economy is dollarized and they import everything. So yeah. when I gifted it, I didn't realize that it was going to be, you know, 10 times more than the Ethiopian. So now whenever I travel, my parents, my, my parents, my partners always tell me, hey, don't go gifting, no libraries right now. Because they, you know, but I still do. And uh, the idea is um, that social justice begins with education. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do to uplift people, for people to lift themselves out of poverty unless you teach them. Yeah. And if you teach equally, then everyone's got an equal chance to succeed. And there's there's nothing like education. And I'm an, I'm I'm an example of that myself, having been born in a in a country that you know that struggled with a civil war and gone from a child of war to American literature, Edgar Allan Poe and Hawthorne, and how that transformed my life. And uh, so now I'm trying to do as much as that as possible um let's try to you know provide schools and libraries and whatever educational tools i can uh, to as many people as i can yeah it's all like different rungs in the ladder for somebody like if they could just get a little step a little step a little step they could do more and more for themselves yeah. um like i i never knew that i could become a doctor i was just never brought up that way i grew up in lower middle class in new york and i wound up just hanging out in this neighborhood of these gangs and they were dealing drugs and there's guns and everything. And, and I, I bumped into this, this, this guy that I kind of knew from outside the neighborhood 
And he was just very, very wealthy. He pulled up in the Lamborghini. He recognized me on the street. And he's like, hey, Robert, hey, Robert. And I'm like, who's this guy in the Lamborghini calling my name? And I look at his face and I recognize him. And we talk for a minute and he drives away. And I just, I had a feeling of, I actually know somebody that has success like that. And it was, it really, it just expanded me just knowing I knew someone like that. And then I had an ex-girlfriend whose father was very successful in building um, different security companies around New York area. And he was a police officer, but part-time he started his own um, security um, company on the side, which became this huge company. And he became very, very wealthy. And that also just expanded me a little bit. I asked him, you know, about how he did that. And he's like, positive thinking. He's got to think positive. You could do anything. And so I had these little kind of mentors here and there, even if they're only in my life for just a little bit, they just kind of showed me I could take a step up, take a step up. And I found a way out. A friend of mine who is a bartender, he's like, oh, I'm going to go become a chiropractor and I'm going to become this type of doctor. And I'm like, wait, if he could do it, I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, how are you doing this? Oh, I take out all these loans. And, you know, because my family couldn't afford to send me to medical school. So I figured out I could take out loans and become a doctor. I never knew these things. So it was like step after step, I just kind of pulled myself out. And um, yeah, it's just otherwise, if I wasn't exposed to these things, I would have never known that I could do this. So I still would have been a security guard somewhere or something like that. Right. It's like the eagle, right? That kind of dropped as a baby in a chicken coop and kind of was raised by the chickens thinking he's a chicken. You know what I mean? <laughs> Until one day, you know, someone said, hey, Dad, you're an eagle. You can fly and then spread his wings and then, you know, uh, yeah. So uh, you're an eagle. Oh, thank you. you you're, you're the, the work you're doing, I'm just blown away that I know, you know, right? on such a large scale, you're doing these things. Like me, I, like, I work with, you know, person at a time, person at a time. You're like going and helping whole villages at a time. And I'm like, yeah. that's just amazing. Yeah. But you do that. And what happens is that like, the cup never runs out. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you give, it's always the cup is overflowing. It's just magical how it works. It's, um, um, it's, it's really hard to explain, but similar to your experience, um, after my engineering school, I went and worked in the tunnels of New York City, you know, modernizing subway station until my mom convinced me to get a job above ground. You know, and at the time I had hundreds of union men working with me. I had a walkie talkie, I was 22, you know, so I was thrilling. So I went and worked for an engineering company that inspects other developers' works. So I was an inspector. I would go from site to site to site. And like you, I would go and see this massive development and I'll meet the owner. And I'm like, I can do this. And this guy doesn't have any magical button or he's just sort of like, okay. And, uh, and with time, I realized that, hey, you know, uh, I can do this. Uh, <laughs> these guys are not anything extraordinary. They didn't have any special, you know, um, a cape or, you know what I mean? The magic uh, cape. Yeah, there's, uh, you know. It's, it's, magic it's, hat. And that's definitely motivating, for sure. Yeah, yeah. How old were you when you first opened your first business or first company? You know, for me, age is very interesting because it's like interesting yeah. points in life. So the, yeah, so the first company was at the age of 27. Oh, like this is very interesting. Yeah. Game, my favorite. Yeah. But I was, that was what we would call uh, intrapreneurship. I was work, already working for a family business that was doing land development. And I convinced them to begin a home building division so we can absorb our own land and build on it. So I, I started the first business while being with another group. So that gave me an experience of, okay, this is how you do it, you know, branding and this and that. Uh, and eventually um, moved to Lebanon and started the first one on my own without any family members at the age of 31. Yeah. And that was the company that was launched to rebuild the city of Beirut after the war. And so I spent five and a half years basically, you know, along with, of course, a large group of people rebuilding the city of Beirut. And that was my main, uh, to this day, I consider that sort of my primary project. But I, since the age of 27, I've never worked with any for anyone um, you know I work for God obviously but um, outside of that I don't I, I haven't reported to anyone uh, or have to explain or um, uh, since I would say the age of 31 because at 27 I still had an uncle sort of you know? yeah but uh, when I started my Lebanese operation same thing when I came back to the U.S. I had to start from scratch 
and I get offers to build like all sorts of cool stuff, like the Novo Hotel, Novo Hotel, Hotel in downtown Chicago, because I spoke French, a like $200 million product. And it was very tempting, but I was like, mm, no, I, you know, I can't, I'm not gonna report to this guy. <laughs> and even the guy I was interviewing with was telling me in a, in a very complimentary way, hey, you can really run this company one day. Like in a way, he was insinuating that. And still with all that, I went back, you know, dusted off my old desk in DC and started from scratch. And miracles happened along the way. Angels showed up, and eventually, um, you know, never had to look back. And uh, now, you know, I, I employ hundreds of people who, you know, do really, really good work. So, <laughs> yeah. But it all started for twenty-seven. Like it's twenty-seven. You know, you know, it's from uh, about this age. No. Saturn return, right? Uh, this has Saturn return. The planet Saturn. Uh, it takes like it takes like from 27 to 29, sorry, years right. to get back to the same point wow. when since you were born. Wow. So a, a lot of people they have. I think every everybody has changes yeah. exactly at 27. But and I then think... it's sorry by 32, 31, it's a little bit more right. stabilized, and then it's again like 38 also. It's changing. It's a lot of changes. I think. I think I. I would say though the age of 15 was my was the time when I had to leave home and go to boarding school. And that's when I I think where I began to learn how to be a self-starter. Because I didn't speak any English, I ended up landed in a boarding school in Massachusetts. Um, and a, a foreigner, you know, from the an Arab, you know, uh, and uh, somehow or another. I had to get up on my feet, make friends, fit in, learn the language, and thrive. And that that experience, I think, started it all. Now you can drop me in a parachute anywhere in the world. Give me six months a year, I'll have a, a few hundred engineers building something great. <laughs> and it, it came from that, from just being sort of dropped at the age of 15. And I just had to do it. I had to get up and do it. And so that resilience, I think, comes from that. Yeah, that's why I really feel that um, people that go off on their own when they're younger, whether it's school or work, or they just kind of get out of the house and they do something on their own. I always feel like those people, they, 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 they're, they're more mature in a way that they really have life hand, there's, they get life handled a lot easier. Yeah. And I think also the, the obstacles that happen along the way, right? I don't know if you've read the poem about the great timber, but they, it talks about you know, a tree that sits out there, gets what's water, no wind, no storms, and that being just a regular tree. But the really powerful trees are the ones that withstand wind and rain and power and have to dig deeper with their roots in order to access water. Those are the, the great, this is the great timber. And so I think it's a combination of uh, going at it alone at a very early age and then encountering obstacles around the a, a way that strengthen you and, and you know and, and makes you tougher yes yes i agree so rudy what? let me let me ask you something else um you mentioned miracles and miracles got me many places in life miracles opened my eyes opened my heart what would you say to people to start finding the miracles in their life well, first, it's, I think you have to be present, right? If you're not mindful, you're not going to see them. Uh, I, I've, I've seen signs years after I, so I, I had experiences where a miracle occurred, but I didn't know about it till years later when I started knowing and I looked, you know, I started becoming more present and mindful that I remember, oh my goodness, how did I survive this and this and how that person came and guided me here and there. So I think it first starts with being present. If you're not noticing the miracle and you're not, you know, and you're not gonna, because miracles are happening all the time. Yeah. And we're going, we're doing one now. And- uh, Yesterday was a miracle. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're continuous. They're just yeah. never stopping. Um, uh, so I think it starts with being present mm -hmm. okay. and noticing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I agree with you 100%. I think presence is one of the most important things we could have. And from there, everything else just starts falling into place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's that moment, you know, like in the moment and, um, and going, having gone through sort of a traumatic experience, um, 
if you try to think too far ahead, it's scary because it's unknown. And if you think back about, oh, I wish I did this or that, it's just, you know, it's also very frustrating. So if you stay in the eye of the storm, like in the, in the center of the hurricane, not, it's very still. But as soon as you go back or forth, then you're, hit, you're gonna hit the, 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 you know, the wind. So I think you gotta be present and centered and then, then you'll notice all the miracles unfolding. Yeah. Beautiful. Be beautifully put, yes, excellent, yeah. thank you. That's a good advice <laughs> we got today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we live, we learn from the best. Uh, well, Rudy, anything else you wanna share with us before we, uh, we go? Um, I say, um, I, would, I would just advise, uh, um, prayers. I, I, I know people sometimes don't, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a continuous prayer. And I think that's how I call in the angels and the miracles. Um, so I think we all need to have a mantra that we sort of pray to ourselves. I have my own that I've been, you know, going to all my life. And even when I'm quiet and you're talking or Vida's talking, I'm a prayer. I never cease praying. And uh, so what I, you know, I would, you know, leave you with that thought is that I think we all need to be praying all the time and then, uh, and then watch what happens. Um, that's what I would be doing. Pray. That's, that's great. That's great. Vita, anything else you want to, you want to add? No, I'm just happy that Rudy's here. <laughs> we had such an amazing <laughs> interview, conversation. I'm just happy. So thank yeah, you this, so much for doing it. Thank you guys for asking. That's kind of fun. You know? So Rudy, is, is there a website for what you do, like the Rudy yeah. Project right there? What so, is it? Yeah, so um, um, there's a couple of them. So the MCN Builds Foundation uh, has a, you know, a, a, has a lot of content in it. Uh, and that is my corporate philanthropic arm. And via this vehicle, I build these free libraries around the world and schools and support a multitude of nonprofit organizations in the Washington region, uh, schools and churches and you know, all sorts of stuff. So that would have, uh, I mean, we also, uh, via this vehicle, I run a returning citizen program where I bring in ex-prisoners who just got into a lot of trouble when they were younger. And we re-indoctrinate them into the workforce, get them to learn how to dress and interview and then try to find placement for them. We also have a lot of STEM programs where we bring children into our job sites so we can get them excited about math and science. So we have a lot of that, that's, that all have you find all of that in the MCN Build Foundation MCN? website. MCN? MCN, Mary Charlie Nancy, yeah. Uh, okay. And um, the, the other foundation is called the Loops Foundation and that's the one for my, to honor my son and, and his memory. And that one, uh, its initial purpose was to do art and music in public schools and bring art and music to those who can't afford to have the, like the studio he had, you know, because he had everything. Um, and, uh, but we had to switch it up and go to food and medicine because just people were struggling in Lebanon. And so we have to divert the resources. So now we're feeding and providing medicine to, to a lot of folks, but still its main purpose is art and music. And you can find that on his, web, on his website page called the Loops Foundation on the Facebook, uh, it's on, it's the Facebook page. Okay, great, great. Rudy, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so hey, much thank for you your for energy. Uh, I have something to say here today. <laughs> yeah. I, ho I hope to see you. I hope to see you in uh, real life again soon. And yeah, enjoy. Or fall. maybe you can come here, join oh, us here. This is a real life here. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll be down there again soon. Definitely. Yes, yes. All right. Thank Thanks, you very Robert. much. Thanks.